Well, Josh, the kids in the hall are back. It's true. Again. So we're going to talk about Brain Candy, the little movie that couldn't. I guess but, this was spurred on by yeah. the, the new series. Uh, the first five minutes is dedicated to making fun of this film. Brain Candy has made its money back. I knew it would. You know, I thought it would take a week, wound up taking 30 years. Well, you're never wrong, Don. The whole reason the whole thing happens is because Brain Candy's finally broken even, which is, <laughs> gives us a fantastic shot of Lorne Michaels, a.k.a. Mark McKinney, a.k.a. whatever his name actually Don is. Don Rorter. Rorter, thank you. Who's still in the same boardroom. <laughs> still the same assistant. And, uh, yeah, so finally having broken even, now we can talk about the movie itself. Yes. Because otherwise nobody wanted to talk about it. It's weird. This feels like one of those movies that eventually would gain some sort of cult following, and it never really has. No, it's very interesting, too, because I was watching it with some friends, and we were discussing that, that, that the, our, our general perception of it before we'd rewatched it was, it was okay, it was, yeah. and it's really quite good. I've, I've always liked it since okay. it first came out, with a giant asterisk, which is that the first two-thirds are very funny. Yes. Consistently funny. Well, I've invented a pill that gives worms to ex-girlfriends. Right, and, and what's positive about that? Well, it's a pill that gives worms to ex-girlfriends. And then uh, it's like they ran out of comedy ideas and they didn't know how to wrap up the story. Yeah. So the last half hour has always been a bit of a slog. And I was completely unaware of the work print, which we'll yep. get into yep. probably a little bit later. But that, that rectifies one of those two problems. Yes. Still well, not funny, but it wraps up the story better. A lot faster, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you wonder if, particularly after watching the work print, how much they talked about or worried about how cynical it was going to, going to end. Mm -hmm. And was it going to be fairly cynical or extremely cynical? <laughs> And it turns out neither of those is particularly funny, but that's okay. No, but story-wise, I think the extremely cynical works better. Oh, yes. Um, but the movie is, would you call it satirical? It kind of is, but it's just but sort it's, of like, it's more in the concept. Yeah. It's, it's just like a blanket idea for a movie to hang all their, their bits on. Yes, and that's kind of one of the things that's very good about the movie. Not that they knew it, but this is the topic could have been, they could have shot it last week. It's all, you know, very up to date with the worry about, you know, depression and drugs and prescription things and how that's affecting the world. Mm -hmm. That's all still very, very uh, important in our lives, unfortunately. And companies uh, taking advantage of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, within that, within that, once you've got that framework, it's just, it's pretty wacky. Mrs. Hurdick? <laughs> It's, you know, excuses to do silly characters. Not, not a lot of characters from the TV show, from the original series. There's a few scattered, but there's no, like, chicken lady. No, no, you no, know, no. They don't bring back some of the, the kind of most popular ones. Well, I guess the cops, yeah. And they come back for the new series, They too. do, they do. <laughs> Again, some things never change. Yes. Hey, did you see that uh, Nina Bedford show this morning? Uh, yeah, that uh, thing about toast fucking. Toast fucking? Yeah, it's a new thing where you fuck or get fucked with toast. I think it'd be easy, especially around the era, because this was 96, right? Yeah. And it was produced by Lorne Michaels. Mm -hmm. And this was sort of the starting point of when he was making all those crappy SNL movies. Yeah, Wayne's World had done well, and the trail-off was beginning. Yeah, which is funny. I was thinking about it, because like, the Blues Brothers is the first SNL movie. Yeah. But there wasn't another one until Wayne's World. Which was smart. <laughs> and then after Wayne's World was so popular, the deluge. Then it was, then it, it's Pat and uh, Stuart Smalley gets his own movie yep. for no reason. A Night at the Roxbury. Yeah, people like that one though. Do they? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's. I didn't even know people liked the sketch. <laughs> it's 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 a thing that they kept would just keep doing. Well, over that's and over that's again. always the joke about the SNL movies is that it's like a one joke character. How do you flesh them out to a whole movie? Yeah. And with the, the Night of the Roxbury guys, it's like half of an idea. It's like half of a joke. They bob their heads. That's what. That's so you've got to go. You've got to expand on it as much as possible because you have nothing to start with. That's fair. All right. <laughs> so some people like that. Movie. Okay. But whereas you end up some, with something like Coneheads that's 20 years too late. And, yeah. And the setup is already properly there. Mm -hmm. and the joke is they have Coneheads. Yeah. They're from another planet. 
Are we are we good? <laughs> Is it eleven fifty five? Can we go to the news? <laughs> But uh, yeah, so Lauren Michaels produced this, mm -hmm. and uh, as he did the original Kids in the Hall series, as he, and, yeah, the original show and um, the current one. So the Kids in the Hall, as a TV show and as a comedy troupe, it kind of ended mm -hmm. a few years earlier, uh, and then they're like, "Well, what do we do next?" As a sketch troupe, there was only one blueprint: Monty Python. And Monty Python did a few seasons of a TV show and needed a movie every three or four years. After the series was over, we all had a short vacation, and then we all came back and tried to come up with ideas for movies. I mean, first off, we can mention that Dave Foley was already in the U.S. He was on news radio, and he was doing just fine. Yeah, and I guess the other kids in the hall kind of resented that. Then he yeah. went off and did his own thing. Yeah. But it's like, you're done. Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily understand, apart from a general sort of, you know... Um, sticking to what you know, why the other kids didn't necessarily go off and do other things. And they did, I mean, they did a little bit, but not as much as Dave did. Mark McKinney went on to SNL, which was very Oh, that's weird. right. He was on it for like a season or two. Yeah. I think he did the chicken lady on it. Really? I think he carried chicken lady over. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was at least one SNL oh, chicken lady Lord. sketch. I'm sure it was fantastic. But I remember seeing him on that and I was like, what is he doing? Yeah. This is, it doesn't work. That Their humor does not work, which is why they got their own show. Yes. Although uh, a couple of them were writers on SNL. Briefly. For a couple of years, yeah. Yeah, and they were like, we don't belong here. Yeah, it was always weird when you'd see the um, SNL reruns on Comedy Central and be like, Bruce McCulloch would just be like in the back of a film sketch, <laughs> filling in. Just like, Wait, what? He doesn't belong there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, should we get into the movie itself? The concept for the movie is perfect, which is that it's a comedy about depression. Yes. Uh, lots of dark comedy, which <laughs> is, of course... Perfect for the kids. That's, that's where they're comfortable. Hi, doctor. I'm Cancer Boy. I, I remember when the movie came out, uh, the Roger Ebert review. He was so upset about Cancer Boy. <laughs> Oh, sorry, sorry. That's okay. My marrow is just low. Terrible. Oh, no. Stupid. Idiotic. No. Unfunny. No. Labored. Forced. Oh, Roger. Painful. Roger. This... Which is just a, a dumb throwaway joke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get it. Obviously, cancer's not funny, but that's why but, you poke that. Yeah. But he's not any, yeah, he's not even the focal point. He, like, he, he himself is deflecting, like, oh, that's not why I'm here. Yeah. It's, you know, because my parents took the drug and they're happy now. And They were so very low. Not just because of me, but because my brother was born with his heart on the outside of his body. Is that a fact? Yeah. For some reason, just because of how non-eventful that scene is, it almost feels like a setup for the video joke later. Yeah. Where he's got, he's got a number one <laughs> folk hip-hop or rap video. <laughs> So it's weird how that just feels like a setup for that, so you can do that later, because otherwise that wouldn't... You'd feel bad if that was the only Cancer Boy bit for some reason. <laughs> I don't know if I would. It's still pretty funny. It is, yeah. <laughs> He's just so happy. He is. <laughs> did you see? Did you see? The doctor and me, did you see? Uh, but the, yeah, the setup, it's, you know, as I said, they were basing how to make a movie on Monty Python, which is you come up with a basic idea, a mm -hmm. basic plot, that is a good way to hang lots of random bits on. Yes. And that's, I think, for whatever problems the movie has, as a concept and as a setup, it's perfect. It really, yes, it sticks together just fine. It sticks together, yeah, as well as like Holy Grail. You know, you're going, you're going from the beginning to the end of the movie, everything is you know, hung on that framework enough. Yeah. Nothing strays too far away. Even yeah. more so in the work print. Yes. There's lots of characters that show up earlier in the movie that end up having a bigger role in the last act of the work print that just kind of vanish from the theatrical cut. Yeah, which is a bummer. But Like the know. cops come back, uh, the Nina Bedford show, the talk show comes yes. back. Even the, the homeless security guard with a gun. I'm a security guard with a gun. Because the, the way I watched it this time, around was I watched the work print, then the, then the finished movie. Mm. And I was, there was stuff that I was thinking wasn't in the finished one that actually made it in, which made me laugh really hard. Like, there, there's stuff that's not in the work print that they decided to put back in for yeah. the final cut, which is interesting. Yes, that was surprising. Like the, even the very intro of the drug is longer mm -hmm. with the whole big like, uh, chalkboard gag. Yeah. Like that's not in the, in the work print at all. Mm -hmm. It was like just a little bit. Um, but what I was talking, thinking about specifically was the, uh, the Nina Bedford intro where she comes on, how do you like my outfit? And they just boo her. Bedford show. I'm Nina Bedford. Do you like my new outfit? Hmm. Happiness. That's what I love about this movie so much is those specific little gags that just are 
non sequiturs almost or just silly, very silly. I, I want to be a, a scientist just like you. What's your advice? Um, work hard and stay in school. Yeah. <laughs> but the uh, I guess so the setup is it's this pharmaceutical company run by not Lauren Michaels, mm -hmm. played by Mark McKinney. Before I mentioned this and we talked about the new kids in the hall and half in the bag, but this was before Mike Myers did Dr. Evil in the Wayne's yes. World movies. Yes. But unfortunately the board takes a narrow view, and in their own narrow way, they think that the company is losing money, which in fact we are, but again, I think this is the narrow view. So the kids in the hall beat him to the punch Darn right. in uh, mimicking Lauren Michaels. Mm -hmm. And brought him back for the new series, and he didn't have to wear a wig this time. <laughs> uh, but he invented a drug called Stummies, which <laughs> is basically Tums, and he built this entire uh, empire on it. But they're 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 falling apart. Their company's falling apart. They need a new they don't drug. Have a new drug. Fast. Yep, got to have a new drug for uh, the summer and or International Women's Day. <laughs> <laughs> I love oh the the deadpan of of Rorator as he's explaining how the board meeting went. Of course, I told him to fuck off. Good for you, Don. <laughs> but then out loud, I said I'd consider it. Of course, Don. Exactly the right thing to do. Play with him. Like, that's the way that he flip flops back and forth through that whole th bit is just so fantastic. And, and Dave Foley is his assistant who just agrees. He's like a, a, like a Smithers kind of character. Very much, has, yeah. Uh, which is the perfect role for Dave Foley. Oh, yeah. Which we'll talk about how limited his roles in the movie are. We can talk for about that. For reasons. But, uh, but so we're, we're our, our hero of the story is Kevin McDonald, mm -hmm. who's probably the perfect choice to play the lead out Absolutely. of all the kids in the hall. Yeah, he's, he's, the, he's the sweetest one. And it just, his, his voice way. is funny. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to do anything, and he's funny. He just goes up a little higher, and yeah, it starts, start, it starts getting funnier. And you, you took away my lap! Because you, sure, I lost my virginity, but who do you think you pushed, boy? So him and his team, have, uh, they're working on a drug that'll end cure depression. It'll lock into your happiest memory, which leads to lots of fun little uh, non sequitur sequences. And then uh, it'll help you, um, you know, be productive and, and move out of the old folks' home and go on one of those space <laughs> things. <laughs> those that, gyro things. Yeah. yeah. Despite his qualms about they need more testing, they're very worried about that, but they're not going to have a lab if they don't have a drug, so they can't do any testing, so he says yes, because the drug goes into production. And that's your setup. Yes. So we see all sorts of different characters that are taking the drug, people that are prescribed the drug, uh, the effects of the drug. Oh, the marketing of the drug. The marketing of the I drug. I love that bit, because yeah, uh, oh, Bruce, Bruce McCullough plays the marketing, head of marketing, and he's just this slimy motherfucker. <laughs> he plays it so good. He, he, every, every, every line is just like insulting somebody. Uh, Nat, mm -hmm. my cap is Luke. Luke Warm Chris. No, Luke Skywalker, you fucking inbred. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, he's got, he's got like, he might have like an eyebrow piercing. He's got like, you know, slick, slick hair. This weird, yeah, it's not like a bull cut, but it kind of is just combed straight forward. Yeah, it's weird. It's very weird looking. And he does all that shit where like, he talks about like, I was driving in my $62,000 car. <laughs> I was driving around last night in my $62,000 car, and I'm trying to think of a name for the drug. And suddenly it hit me. The name? No, a bird, it hit my windshield. And yeah, I, the way that he characterizes that is so perfect. And there's, it's, it's a great setting up of, like when the actual meeting that they're having is uh, to discuss what color the drug is. Yeah. <laughs> And I love how that's just completely sort of like, arbitrary. Yeah, those sort of pointless meetings where yeah. they've already made up their mind. They just have to give the illusion that they're accepting input. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good corporation jokes in this movie. Yes. Yeah. Well, the whole, the whole design of the corporation, like the huge rooms with the big meeting tables and even the like subterranean labs and how they kind of go on and on and everything. Like, yeah. it's, it's really great and actually uh, reminded us quite a bit of um, Hot Sucker Proxy. Kind of oh, a similar sure. feel. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Someone who's not quite in charge loses control of his of his invention and loses sight of what he really wanted to do. Yeah. And the fact that uh, it's very broad, but the fact that uh, Chris Cooper, and that's uh, Kevin McDonald's name, yeah. Chris Cooper, who's 
it's confusing because there's a professional actor named Chris Cooper right. too. But their their whole team is they're in this like sub all the labs and stuff are like subterranean. Yeah. And then they go up to the big room with the big office with the big table. Look, are we ever gonna get the big table in here, or do I have to go out and cut down that fucking tree myself? That's most of the plot at this point. The drug goes out into the world, it gets to a non-prescription level, so everybody's taking it, and then things go wrong. The end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's around the point where I, I picture them not really knowing what to do with the story. Yeah, they figured things, out... Things gotta go wrong in the third act. Yeah. I don't know, comas? Sure, they get stuck in, the, in a loop. Won't you take me to... Kita. And you know, Chris... In the... But then what? Uh... <laughs> That's, that's when the movie yeah. kind of crashes. And, you know, I, I, I get the first impression, which is terrorists? Well, that's in the uh, the work print. Yeah, yeah. That's and the that's initial idea. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess we'll talk about the work print ending. Might as well. Yeah. Because you had mentioned the work print, which mm -hmm. I never even heard of before. Yeah, floating around the internet on a real, real, you know, dubbed VHS. I wonder, I wonder where that originated from. I wonder. It's It's got the official Paramount, like crawl on the bottom so it's yeah. clearly initially came from the studio but uh i, I was you you had said like because i had mentioned like i always liked the movie but the last act kind of falls apart mm -hmm. and you and you mentioned the work print and i hadn't seen it so i was like oh there must be something to this because i remember there was like an hbo first look for the yeah. movie when it first was coming out in theaters and there were so many clips from the movie shown in that that weren't in the final movie. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what is all this stuff? There's like a... There was, I think the, the initial thing with the, with the fries. Yeah, Dave Foley is like a, like a fast food employee. Mm -hmm. The fries will never be ready. He's like, the fries will never be ready. <laughs> and I used to quote that from the HBO special, even though it's not in it's the not movie. not in the movie at all. And so I, I assumed there was going to be like radically different things in the movie. Yeah, and it turns out that's the genesis of the entire third act it's yeah the the most of the movie is the same except like we mentioned there's some stuff that was removed little, or little added cuts, back but yeah. it, it's pretty minor and so i was like oh this is basically the same movie what's yeah. the big deal Jean and then garofalo you get to the, gets her line cut yeah janine garofalo's in a scene in the the work print yeah i think she's in one shot of the final theatrical yeah cut. she's in the mo she's on the monitor yeah flirting with chris cooper on him. but, but she's in the she's in the end credits though which is still funny oh really yeah because we're watching <laughs> i was like janine garofalo but uh, yeah, so then you get to the third act, and they must—they just like reshot stuff for mm -hmm. the final theatrical cut because it's radically different. Yeah. In the theatrical cut, Chris Cooper discovers that the drug is putting a small percentage of people into comas. Okay, five percent. So yeah, five percent, and they—they they call it acceptable losses. Mm -hmm. And then that's when he's like, "Well, okay, people are in comas. Now what? I guess we got to tell people." Yeah, there's the whole, the whole thing. You still get the whole thing about we got to go to the media and you get all that. You get the fantastic scene with the get the, get your finger out of my finger. You, don't you touch my finger. Get your finger out of my face. No, don't you touch my finger. Get your finger out of my face. 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 Which, actually, that is one thing that ends up being funnier in the end cut. But we'll talk about that when we get to it. Um, but yeah, so that's at, at that point, that's where the movie really diverges. Chris Cooper's walking out, you know, kind of walking around town like he does. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, he gets kidnapped. Yes. And taken to this to this church, and there's the cult, and and then and then kind of the same thing happens where they do go to the media. Yeah. After, well, you know, in, well in, and there's well, in the theatrical cut, he invites the media, but it's just like like a college, college radio, radio station. Radio, yeah. Almost nobody shows up. A weapons magazine and a teen girl yeah. magazine. And then he discovers, oh, the real press meeting is happening over here. Yeah. And that's when they, in the theatrical cut, they say, oh, we're going to give checks to the families of the people that are in comas. Wow, that's a lot of money. How pleasing. And then they have a big parade at the end. Once a year, they have a parade to right. celebrate the coma right. victims. So that's the theatrical cut. In the work print cut, uh, he breaks into a TV station. He goes on the Nina Bedford show. Yes. He gives a similar speech to what he gives in the theatrical, which is, he talks basically like, you know, people are supposed to be depressed sometimes and take your life back and all that. Um, and just no one cares. And no one cares. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which ultimately is the case in both cuts. It's like, the, the uh, well, there's the, it's, the, it's the taxi driver that has the monologue. Did yeah. people stop taking it? No. So, did they listen to Dr. Cooper and stop taking the drug? No, they did not, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, people just kept taking it in yeah. the end. Um, although in the, in the end of the work print, there's no like final button of they're trying to, you know, induce sadness. Mm -hmm. Like that's just gone. No, that's yeah. that's Chris Cooper takes Gleeman X 
and he gets he's one of the five percent so they wheel him out in the parade every year you see him on the parade float yeah, yeah. which is i think a better ending absolutely he, it's, i mean it's very very cynical you, but it for works. the most part you like the chris cooper character just because it's kevin mcdonald and he's goofy and funny but he made a bad decision yes and it's, all of this has happened because of him yeah and he, so having and he, him get some sort of comeuppance at the end and mm-hmm. as the result of his own creation like it works a lot better than he must keep working to try to find a cure for the thing he caused. Yeah. Which, eh. And then we don't have a good comedy bit to end the movie on, so we'll randomly cut back to Scott Thompson's old lady character with her granddaughter who floats away on a balloon. Yeah, her grandson. But, uh, her grandson, yeah. yeah. She gives him, yeah, that's, that's her saddest memory is that she gave him a bunch of balloons and he floated away, but it, he was okay in the end. How do you feel? Shit. She's uh, depressed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, she's depressed. Yes. She's sad. Yes. She's sad. Yes. That's not even that funny. No, that's the thing is that's I when I first saw the movie, I was like, oh, it just seems to peter out. Yeah. Although and I was again, like, what is this final scene with the balloon? What is this? Although again, it does set up. There's a very there's a past the end credits scene that I do I do like a lot. Where's Miguel? I I thought he was with you. <sighs> well, he's missed the clown. I'm not going to say that the it, the 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 finished movie the you know the third act is a complete disaster either because you get some funny bits you get uh if i could roar tour with the with the brace on his finger and you don't get any you know obviously that's he's gone from the movie after that point in the, in the work print so that's i, I really like that bit um and yeah you, you, you get some okay bits in there like it's not it's not as good but it's still decent slipped off my shoes Yeah, it, it feels like the momentum that the movie's been building up, just it just kind of peters it, out. Yeah, it does. It which does. is a shame. We'll talk about funny stuff in the movie. Because yeah. The, I think the first, as I said, the first two thirds, there's lots of good bits. There's fantastic bits. I mean, uh, straight up from uh, Scott Thompson plays Wally, a closeted gay man who <laughs> everyone knows is gay except him. <laughs> uh-huh. You are gay. You, you, you are gay. You are a homosexual. Mm-hmm. I know it, your family knows it, dogs know it. And I love, again, talking about setup and payoff, I love the bit where, you know, the, uh, the cops manage to accidentally catch him because uh, they have to go pee before they go back on duty after they're drinking beers. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about toast fucking. Toast fucking. <laughs> but yeah, so they, they manage to catch, it's basically Danny from the original series, but now he's Wally, but he's the same sure. character. Yeah. Um, and he goes on the drug and he's, you know, he has, has that whole showpiece, I'm gay. I'm gay! He's gay! <laughs> the big musical number. <laughs> it's great. But I love the bit that, all you know, when Chris Cooper's coming back to the office and all of a sudden that's the gay hangout. Yeah. And he freaks everybody out. And everybody runs away again. And then finally it's just Wally. It's just like, all yours, Captain. <laughs> I fucking fell on the floor with that one. Oh, I loved it. Jeez. And that's a good example of just, like, the silliness of it, and which is the stuff that really grabbed me the most, I think. Stuff like, um, well, when, at the beginning, after they've just discovered the, uh, the, you know, the drug works, it's going to be great. And then, you know, everybody's like, uh, Chris Cooper's like, calm down, calm down, calm down. And you hear a voice just say, Jesus Christ, this is great. And everybody turns around. I think we got it. There you go. He turns around, <laughs> and there's Dave Foley over here. I think we got it. Yeah. And who are you? Just a guy. Well, I love his, his body language in that moment, too, because yeah. he, like, takes a step back, and then he kind of, like, goes to the side a bit. Like, like I'm judging you guys. Yeah. You know? it's, <laughs> it's played so great. But, yeah, like, that feels to me like something that you'd, you, when you're writing it, it's something that you'd joke, joke about putting in there and then actually and then put it in. And you just put it in there. Yeah, which I love. Like the Queen of England approving the drug. The drug is approved. Next. It is kind of funny, though, that that particular bit with Dave Foley in retrospect and kind of knowing some more like the behind the scenes stuff of the movie where it's like oh he's he's the other guy yeah because apparently the story is yeah he was working on news radio Mm -hmm. uh everyone was not excited about the script to the movie yeah he actually tried to get out of being in the movie yeah (laughs) yeah we noticed even straight away like he's the only one that doesn't have a writing credit on the movie because he well he didn't write it he wasn't there Mm -hmm. we couldn't agree on anything and any ideas i had i couldn't get into the script so I just said, well, I want to minimize what I'm doing on it because I don't want to be around these guys. Our manager called me up and said, don't worry, they're not going to make this movie. Paramount hates the script. It's not going to get made. But if you don't sign the contracts, nobody's going to get paid for writing it. 
and then Lauren talked Paramount into making it. And then they have to worry about... Contractually obligated to be in it. Yeah. And I had to sue him to be in the movie. Mm -hmm. And everybody's, like, enthusiasm about the whole thing was super low, Mm -hmm. which is so weird that you're, like, trying to make a comedy film and everybody's that miserable. It's impressive. Scott Thompson's brother, like, committed suicide. Yeah, yeah. And he said it was a nice distraction from that, but it's like, but you're making a comedy about depression and there's jokes about suicide in it. It's so, like... The, the mindset of everybody involved in this movie, it's amazing that it's funny. But and it's it is very funny. funny. <laughs> and, and the suicide bit is one of the funnier bits. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my father suffered from depression. Chris. But yeah, the suicide bit, the way, the way that's all set up is just so good. <laughs> just that, that match cut to the little kid and <laughs> that slow walk. And when he hits his, <laughs> hits his briefcase on the railing, it just falls open. It's just the perfect timing. But also the way he, uh, he's like, did you, what is the first thing he says? He's like, did oh, you. Did you clean the house while I was gone? Did you clean the house while your old man was at work today? Yep. Oh, yeah, 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 good, yeah. Did you clean under the fridge? Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then he, does, weird... he doesn't even like pat his head, or no, he just kind of like rubs like, the back of his hand. It's on like his... he went with a cat. <laughs> what about the gun? Did you give the gun a good cleaning? Yep. And then he does it a second time, and the kid leans into it, yeah. and he knows it's coming. That is probably one of my favorite kind of elongated bits yeah. in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> it reminded, again reminded me a whole lot of. Uh, the whole the the kids in the hall sketch where the the Kevin McDonald's the depressed dad that comes down in the morning, you know his wife has left him, but he can't fix the car without a whole lot of milk. Can't have cornflakes without a whole lot of milk. Well, that's that's what I was excited about for the movie was on their show as it went along as the seasons went along, they did more and more elaborate kind of pre-taped bits. Yeah. L- little mini movies. Yeah. Sausages is one of my favorite things ever. Absolutely. And it was really fascinating in the do- in the new documentary to find out the why behind that a little more than just the way it, that, that's just the way it developed. Mm-hmm. Things finding out, like Bruce McCullough was like, I should have a career after this. Yeah. <laughs> so. You should start directing stuff. Yeah. Most of my favorite stuff on the, the original show is, is the more cinematic things. Oh, God, the dream about the, the peaches. <laughs> I don't it, remember those. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it was a pear. My bad. I had the pear dream again. Is that there? Yes. I think I'm insane. I know you are. So I was excited about the movie because of that. Tonally, the way the movie starts fits in with some of their more kind of abstract bits because it's, like I mentioned, there's that, that kind of lingering camera just yeah. floating from... From bit to bit, very uh, very cinematic with the whole like the you know w- watered down streets. Yeah, well, and it has a weird like ambience to it. It's like, there's like a thunderstorm. Mm-hmm. It almost feels like a horror movie or something. A little that, bit that these little comedy bits happen, but yeah, it's not. It. There's no like goofy music. Yeah, until it focuses into the rock club, the suicide club. Grivo, and this is how even if you didn't know that the kids of the hall were Canadian, which I don't know how you wouldn't, but mm. if you didn't, this is one of the the. The things I noticed is the uh, the groupies. There's the two groupies. Well, technically three, yeah. because Mark McKinney <laughs> wants to be one of the cool groupies. <laughs> oh my god! But the other two are uh, like whenever I watch something that's shot in Canada, I'm like I recognize that person. Yeah. All these like Canadian character actors, and one of those groupies is one of the leads in the movie Cube. The oh Canadian wow! Movie Cube. Okay. And then the other one has a prominent role in George Romero's *Land of the Dead*, Holy which shit. was shot in Toronto. Wow! So like, yeah, well, wasn't one of them? I thought that the, the the brunette was the one that was actually um, the girlfriend. Uh, what's the? Is Bobby? Yeah, Bobby. Like, I think she actually played Bobby's girlfriend during the series at one point. Oh, okay. But I, yeah, so there's a connection there too, like the one that uh, uh, burns her arm with the cigarette. Mark McKinney's very impressed by. <laughs> thinks thinks she's cool by association. She starts mm. jamming <laughs> onto the music. 
<laughs> that's another bit where it's like all the, every one of the kids in the hall have like their thing when it comes to being a performer and uh, they're very good at it. Yeah. Bruce McCulloch, whenever he dresses up like a lady, he's always so like flighty and airheaded. I could have anyone. I'm beautiful. Yeah, the way he plays that character throughout the whole thing where, oh, after, after, the, after the night out when they're back in the, in the lab the next morning and, and she's just, I won't call you for a week. And he's not talking about that at all. <laughs> something wrong? No. <laughs> Runs away, bumps into Mrs. Hurdicure and just keeps running and like still running throughout the background, like freaking out. That, that's something else I noticed in the work print is the, the old lady character played by Scott Thompson, mm -hmm. who's great in that part. Oh, I feel like God's rubbing my tummy. Uh, her name is Mrs. Hurdicure, but I noticed in the work print, they never say her name until the scene where Chris Cooper goes to her house. Yeah. Mrs. Hurdicure? And so as I noticed in the, the uh, theatrical cut, whenever they call her Mrs. Hurdicure, it's like dubbed over. Cause yeah. I think they realized they never called her by name. So when he's going to her house, the audience is gonna be like, who's he talking about? So they dubbed the, they, me, they had ADR to add a yeah. name Mrs. Hurdicure. It's always yeah. like the voice is uh, like someone whose back is to the camera. Someone off screen, yeah. Cause they were like, oh shit, we never established that that's her name. How are you feeling 957? Pardon? How are you feeling dear? How you feeling, 957? Pardon? How you feeling, Mrs. Herdicure? So the, the movie is directed by Kelly Macon, mm. who mostly a TV director. Okay. He, he worked on the original show. He works on the new show, but he's done tons and tons of TV stuff. Okay. But the year before this, he directed the classic film National Lampoon's Senior Trip. Also starring Kevin McDonald in a supporting role. And I, uh, this is a complete aside, but I'm going to bring it up because there will never, ever be another opportunity for me to talk about the movie National Lampoon's Senior Trip, nor should <laughs> there be. Um, <laughs> but I, I, it was a movie I thought was very funny when I was like 15. Sure. Uh, That's the right age for something like that. And in talking about doing the Brain Candy review, it was like, I'm going to rewatch National Lampoon's Senior Trip. Oh, So needless to say, it does not hold up. <laughs> but here's the weird thing is I watched it streaming. I think I rented it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I noticed something was off early on and I couldn't picture, I couldn't figure out what it was. I was like, something doesn't seem right. And then I figured out what it was at the end, which is that the version that's available on streaming is missing all of its opticals, which includes like credits. Whoa. So there's all these, like the opening of the movie is it's a high school movie. And there's all these like long shots that kind of follow all the high schoolers as outside of the school going into the school. And they're these long shots because they're meant to have credits over them. And yeah. the credits just aren't there. <laughs> and then the end of the movie, kind of like Animal House. So it says like what happened to all the characters after the movie. Yeah. It has that, but those titles aren't there. So it's just all these like long shots that hold on like yearbook photos for no reason, completely no oh, context. That's so weird. So if you'd never seen the movie before and you're watching it, you'd be like, what are these shots? Why are we seeing all yeah. this? You just pulled the wrong master? I don't know. It's something? the weirdest thing. Huh. So I wanted to mention that. Uh, so that, if you really want to get the proper senior trip experience. I guess you got to go find an old DVD or something. Yep. But <laughs> they should VHS. be about, yeah, they should be about a dollar each if you can locate one. <laughs> Uh, your local mega media exchange. Who's in charge of the quality control of the streaming version of National Lampoon Senior Trip? <laughs> They've done a terrible job. This urine is great. I'm sure you can hear that it's raining. We're just gonna power through this, I guess. Fuck it. Pretend your uh, streaming's bad and your audio's <laughs> bad. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Got a bad MP3 code. Sure. Sure. Um, but yeah. So, uh, it's just endless fun to, to think about the little bits that get in there. You know, it's, yeah, it's nothing that you're going to recount to somebody as like a great film or anything, but it's definitely a lot of fun. I would, I, I would put it at fine. I, will, I, will I revisit it much? Not a whole lot, but I would happily revisit it if it was just on. I think it was hard to see for a while. Ah! Something's in my eye! Well, it's, even right now, it's not streaming anywhere. Oh, really? It's, there's a, there's um, a Blu-ray that came out recently, which yeah. I think is like a, like a uh, BDR. Like a, just a, a, a burned disc. Yeah. But hey, at least it's available. Yeah. Uh, basically, if otherwise, if you want to watch it, it's on YouTube. 
just like Freaked. <laughs> yeah, it's still up there. Yeah, just that's, sitting there. No one cares. Studio cares, cares that little, I guess. They're not even going to copyright strike it. There you go. Yeah, but so that's, that's you know, how it was regarded for a long time. And, and if there was, I mean, I remember there was a DVD like when it came out, and then it just kind of disappeared into the dollar bins, and it didn't have the, the reputation that, like, a Monty Python movie would have. Yeah. And you wonder, too, like, yeah, if it gets lost in, the, in all the other... Lorne Michaels SNL movies, even though obviously it's a standout one, it's completely different, yeah. not related to Saturday Night Live, but if it just kind of, you know, if it probably would have shown up on one of those like four movie box sets with like, yeah, Stuart Saves His Family or something. Oh no. I know. <laughs> I, I, I hope that wasn't its fate. I, I don't remember. <laughs> but uh, I wonder if that's part of it, if it just kind of got lost in the shuffle there too. I think it's just when a movie, especially that era, if the movie flopped, that was just, it's just done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they just disappeared. Freaked. Like it was another one where it's like, it just vanished. Yep. 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 Who and knows? You can track, well, I guess you can track it down because it's on YouTube. It's out there. We don't endorse watching it that way. Go buy a Blu-ray. Yes. Uh, that's how you should watch it. If you can uh, PayPal the kids in the hall some, movie, some money <laughs> otherwise, Dave Foley probably needs it. <laughs> He owes it to an ex-wife, probably. Well, I think he's allowed back in the U.S. now, so I think he's doing okay. Finally. Ugh. <laughs> Doesn't have to star in Uwe Boll movies anymore. And we, we got more tail running around here than the, than the Playboy Mansion, but it's... But, uh, yeah, no, the new series, maybe the new series being well-received will get people more interested in brain candy as well. I don't know. I would be happy about that. I would be happy if that would at least to be available legitimately streaming somewhere. That would be nice. Sure. <laughs> it's a Paramount movie. Yeah. Uh, Put it on Paramount Plus. Is it on Paramount Plus? I don't think so. Oh. You just don't get it here. <laughs> <laughs>